Prospect One, the Kansas City Royals. All right, the Kansas City Royals top 10 fantasy prospects. Starting at number one is Nick Prado, the 2017 first round draft pick, who I love. Uh, Khalil Lee is number two. Number three, Selly Mateus. Let's hope. Bless you. There's no way I said that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, number four, Nikki Lopez. Number five, Michael Gigliotti. Number six, Ryan O'Hearn. Number seven, MJ Melendez. Number eight, Josh Stamont. Number nine, Eric Scoglin. And number 10, Hunter Dozier. Those are your Kansas City Royal top 10 prospects. A couple guys outside of the top 10 that are interesting in much, much like deeper leagues. Hunter Dozier is already in that, like, I mean, after Hunter Dozier, you're in the 400 range. And there's just a couple lottery tickets you can go and take a look at. So the Royals are not the deepest. Um, I would definitely wouldn't say, you know, like a lot of the organizations as we've gone through looking at teams per division, you kind of will have like the one team, you know, like the Giants really stand out as not being good in the NL West. You would have the, um, the Cubs in the NL Central. This isn't the case here when we look at the AL Central. It's not a case of like, oh, the Royals are really not good to the next team. They're, they're kind of all close-ish, but the Royals are the, the bottom barrel here. But they definitely have some interesting names here, you know, in the top ten. Would you say are the Royals like bottom third or are they uh, of all systems or are they kind of more middling? Mm, I like that's how good the central is. I think that it's it's probably in the middle of what you just said. Like I'm not sure they're necessarily, you know, 21 or something like right, that. They're, right. they're probably somewhere between, you know, bottom third and then like in the middle, maybe like a 18 or 17. Again, 18 to 22, something like that. Yeah, again, like I don't have to worry, nor is it really relevant for me to go and be like, okay, here's my top 10, you know, organizational prospect ranks. Like here's number right. one and here's number 30. It doesn't pertain to what I do because we're looking at this from a fantasy perspective. But, I mean, it's intriguing to kind of know where these players are. But, yeah, again, like I said, this is a – Central's an even division, an even division of prospects, and the Royals uh, not as bad as some of the bottom-end ones. So who are we going to see this season from this? Because the top-end guys seem to be a little bit a uh, ways away, but Hunter Dozier, uh, we've already seen him a little bit, haven't we? Yeah, you and I have seen him in the uh, – in spring training. We saw him. I think I, I might have seen him in the Arizona Fall League. And he got some major league time as well. So I just got him down there because he's been kind of buried. But, you know, fair enough. It's actually really good talking about this because I labeled him as number 10. If Mike Moustakis leaves, there's a really good opportunity Hunter Dozier is going to get a long look. You know, because right. in um, 2017... Let's see, where did he get his, or actually it was 2016, he got like 19 at-bats last year. He only had 111 at-bats in 2017 overall, hit 243, uh, looks like one, a couple homers, four homers. I mean, he's a big power, kind of hole-in-his-swing type of player, but guess what? I wouldn't kill anybody that said he's kind of like Mike Moustakis with a little bit less power. So I actually might reevaluate this. Once Mike Moustakis has made his decision, maybe when people are listening to this, it's happened. Even more important to kind of go back and take a look at the ranks because he could take he could vault up if the Royals don't like make another move and they give him a shot. And he has got some power and he's a guy that I wouldn't be shocked to see 20 to 25 homers and then he sticks in the majors. And if that were the case, I would actually probably move him up probably above Ryan O'Hearn. He would probably go to six somewhere in that between Michael, Michael Gigliotti and Ryan O'Hearn range. I mean, you kill it with Gigliotti. Like that's a that's a name that you didn't butcher at all, and I'm very surprised by that. It's a very butcherable um, name. It is. It is. It would, I would build the butcher up that name easy. Who else for this season? Is there anybody else? Well, you, the the pitchers are the guys that are probably going to get some looks who have gotten looks. I believe. I'm gonna take a look here. I don't remember off the top of my head. I see it. It wasn't Forrest Griffin. I might have been Eric Scoglin. That got some time in the majors, and I think they even lost one of the kids. Uh, yeah, Scoglin had 18 innings pitched. He was starting a couple games, 25 year. I mean, he's hardly a prospect anymore. Scoglin definitely can get another look. Um, we Ryan O'Hearn is another one. Um, he was out here in the fall league, and he's got some massive power. Not this year, but this was in 2016. And off that 2016 season, 
He hit 275 with 22 homers. Last year, identical homers, 22, but the average dropped. It dropped by about 20 points, so that set him back a little bit. But he's got a big old power swing. He's 6'3", 200. I still like Ryan O'Hearn. So, again, if the Royals are just in a rebuilding stage and they lose Hosmer and they lose you know, Moustakis and they don't go find replacements, you could see Ryan O'Hearn out there as well. And Ryan O'Hearn, I wouldn't be surprised if he succeeded a little bit more than Hunter Dozier. But these are not top-end exciting prospects. If there was one prospect that could get up this year that I would like to see that I'd be a little bit more excited about, it's Nicky Lopez, the shortstop. He's not a big dude. 5'11", 175. He was out here on the fall league. I got to chat with him. And I, and he turned... This is one of the few guys that really turned my opinion once I got to see them because he's not a big, um, as I would call it, a stuff and things type of guy. You know, very minimal homers. He's got eight career homers. Uh, he did steal 21 bases last year, and he's one of those guys where you're like, well, got a good knack for the ball and hitting, but how much is that really going to translate? But seeing him in the fall league, he really does. He's got a smooth, repeatable swing, you know, that's going to generate singles and doubles, and, you know, he's more than likely he could be at the bottom of an order, but I could see him hitting number two. That's a guy I would be a little bit excited about if they were to give the opportunity. I'm not sure that happens this year, so there's not a bunch of big fantasy like production coming out of Kansas City this year outside of Dozier and O'Hearn potentially they could be some late like power guys what's the story with Kyle Zimmer because I, I, I do you even have Zimmer on this list nah nah, I'm, I'm, nah he's just not he's just off your list and roster resource has him as a reliever is he just done yeah he's he over can't he, I, I've seen Zimmer a whole bunch of times and the dude I mean first off he just can't stay healthy that's his, right. his main huge problem. The dude cannot stay healthy. And second off, just due to that health, they started pushing him into a relief role. I think it was in the, um, you know where I saw him last? It was the opening game of spring training in 2017. I thought it was going to be Whole Foods. No, no. And I told you about this because I bought tickets because the and the sites didn't update it because you Darvish got push, pushed up. It was Kyle Zimmer versus you Darvish. <laughs> It was just a spring training, though. Right. And uh, Zimmer got. I, I don't think he got out of the first, or if he did, I think he went one and, uh, you know, one third of an inning. And he got lit up, I think, for four or five runs. And, you know, he's just, he's, he, I don't think he's going to be able to last more than an inning due to health, due to control command issues. He's a reliever, and that's why he's just, he's gone. He's off the list. All right. What about, um, like, uh, value picks or sleepers for the, for the Royals here? So I'm, I'm going to focus on the top two guys that we're going to talk about value for a second because I have them ranked in places that I bet other people will not, particularly Nick, uh, Nick Prado. Prado, I mean, this is my dude. You remember me just gushing about Prado. He was the number one overall pick. Big, big fan because uh, he's probably, I think in most people's eyes, like the number one first base prospect coming in that had like the most upside uh, high school guy, six one, one ninety five, 195. And I got to see, I caught his, uh, this was one of those guys where I caught his first major league hit on video and I tweeted it out and I talked oh. to him after the game and Prado was, did you talk to after the game. Yeah. Well, it was just Prado. It was just Prado in that one. And he was, he was just a great kid. Like he just wanted to talk, you know? And I talked to him a couple other times where he was just like, ah, you know, so I was just getting, I was getting good swings. He's like, I got, I got good at bats. I just wasn't getting the hits, and he was real positive about it because, uh, like, I, I wasn't in the very first game, but it was like a game before he, you know, it was a bunch of strikeouts and whatnot. And this game was the Mikel Baez game. Uh, if you remember Mikel Baez when he made his big kind of like boom, this was his first pro pitching uh, debut in the AZL, and I was like, oh, this is great, and he was making everyone look silly. And then, you know, he got out of the game, and that's when Prado got his hit. Prado uh, has one of the smoothest, most natural swings I've seen in a long time, and he's already just a big dude. Like 6'1", 195, I would have guessed a little bit bigger. I would have said he's closer to 6'2", maybe 205, 210. He put some big muscle on him. I think he could hit for 25-plus power. I think he can stay at first. Good defense. And I think he's a middle-of-the-order guy. I'm aggressive on him. So... Maybe you don't have to take him where I have him, bump him back a little bit, but I would be targeting him. And then Khalil Lee, who, unfortunately, the last time I saw him, it was that game against Hunter Green out here. It was one of the final like AZL games, and Hunter Green was just making everybody not look good. 
but uh, he is a good power speed combo guy. 20 stolen bases, 17 homers, dropped his average down a whole bunch from 16. It went from 269, nice, down to 237. Nice. And it was just, you know, I think that was part of the adjustment period of looking to hit for power. But I like him. I think if you would have seen him in person, you would be into Khalil Lee. I think he could be a top of the order type of guy. I think he could pop. I wouldn't be shocked shocked if he was able to pop those 20 homers. It's just going to be a matter of will he be able to hit for, um, you know, hit for some contact. Otherwise, he's going to be hitting like seven in an order. So I gave you two guys that, you know, as far as value goes, because they offer the absolute most upside of any players with the Royals. And those, if I were targeting, and I would say these are both targets, I would be targeting Prado and Lee, 19 year olds that are not coming up this year, probably not coming, they're definitely not coming up next year. But after that, you can start looking for both of these guys. And they're also just particularly kind of working together as well uh, as they did in the AZL. So Prado and Lee would be some targets for me. What about sleepers? I'll give you two. MJ Melendez. Uh, I want three. Okay, three. All right. Well, MJ <laughs> Melendez, his father actually, I believe his father is like a head coach at like Miami or something like that. Or I know he's just like a, he's a coach. I say head coach, a manager of a, one of these baseball teams. And I saw him multiple times out here. Super polished, kind of ripped dude, 6'1", 185, uh, good backstop. Had a pretty good experience in the AZL, hit 262, four homers, a couple stolen bases, struck out a bit. He'll work on that. Very polished catcher that I think is going to be the future catcher for the Royals. And I'm not like overly aggressive on him, but I like him. And then one that I targeted in a way, way early episode of Prospect One, where we were looking at stats, was this dude, uh, Delvin Kaplan who was, uh, I mean, his performance was in the um, Dominican Summer League, but he had the lowest, Bogman, 56 innings pitched with a .48 ERA. Jesus. Yeah, man. A .63 whip. He was the ERA and whip leader of any pitcher, if I remember correctly from my episode, any pitcher 50 or more innings pitched, he had the lowest ERA and whip. And this was in the Dominican Summer League. So he should be coming up here, uh, I would imagine, to spend extended spring training and uh, do some time in the AZL. I thought he was pretty slick if you were looking for like, Oh, super deep ass uh, starting pitcher sleeper. Who just got kicked out of the the Dominican League? Um, or was it the? It, it it was either the Dominican League or it was the Venezuelan League. Why can't I remember? Was it Mikel Franco? That's it. Mikel Franco just got booted. Yeah, well, he was like um, he was like not following a whole bunch of rules. Right, right. He went out partying the whole night or whatever. So yeah, you know what I'm trying to think of too. There's this one kid and just. For the life of me, I can't remember. And someone someone can remind me who it is. It was a Royals <laughs> prospect, a starting pitcher from like 2016 or 15, who he had um, – I don't want to go into all of it because I, I heard people talking about it on the backfields. But he kind of had a breakdown, and he got quit baseball. It's like his 20-year-old. It's just killing me, dude. It's like a first-round or second-round pick. And um, I heard players asking where he was. And someone was kind of being like, yeah, we don't know, da, da, da. And then, like, you know, three weeks later, the dude just took a complete break from baseball. And he was a top Royals pick. Was I, his name Bubba Starling? It was not Bubba Starling, <laughs> unfortunately. Poor Bubba Starling. Remember when you took Bubba Starling over George Springer and I got yeah. George Springer? Yeah, I remember that. Okay. So just, can we go on to the next team now so I don't have to be reminded of Bubba Starling? Yeah, no more Bubba Starling. Yeah, there you go. Those are your Royals. 